All right, well, thank you. Beautiful day on Maui. It's 8.28, coming up on 8.30. And joining us now on the air is a guest we've had on before. But, folks, if you are experiencing any pain in your legs or discomfort or swelling, or if you're seeing the spider veins or even varicose veins, you want to pay special attention this morning because Dr. Randall Juliff, medical doctor, leads the vein clinics of Hawaii with two decades of experience. He's treated hundreds of patients with venous disorders as well as a range of vascular and thoracic and cardiac uh, disease. Triple board certified in phlebology, general surgery, cardiovascular and thoracic surgery. And Dr. Juliff offers four convenient locations. Honolulu, Lehui over on Kauai, here in Wailuku, and uh, the newest location, Kamuela, on the Big Island. So, uh, you know, we have spoken to so many people that are so satisfied and have got wonderful results with Dr. Juliff, and he joins us on the air again this morning. Doctor, good morning, and welcome to the Maui Sunrise Show. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful, but we've got good. a lot of questions for you, Doctor, yeah. because, um, y- you know... Over the time that you've joined us here on the air, the one thing that I come away with is, and I woke, it's funny, I woke up with this in my head one day, venous insufficiency. I I had never heard of it until I spoke with you, mm-hmm. and it, it's a bigger problem than many of us uh, understand or know anything about, but you're the specialist in this area, and I would like you to explain to us uh, what might be the first sign of of venous insufficiency? Well, venous insufficiency, um, uh, first of all, it's, uh, that's just a fancy term for the fact that the veins in our legs aren't working the way they should. And veins are the blood vessels that carry blood back to the heart, so blood in the veins in our legs should be consistently moving upward, but when some veins fail, it, and typically they don't all fail, you know, there's just a, a several typical few that uh, tend to fail with time, uh, but uh, when they fail, the blood actually starts to move in the wrong direction. Rather than moving upward, uh, the blood starts to settle down into the lower leg, and basically it's just being pulled down by gravity, um, and uh, as that blood settles into the leg, or and we call that pooling, as the blood pools into the lower leg, then it can create symptoms. And the, you know, the confusing thing, I think, for, most pe- for many people uh, with respect to venous insufficiency is there's such a wide spectrum of symptoms, and many of them are not uh, real obvious to the, the lay person that they might be related to a, a vascular problem in their legs. Well, that's a, that's interesting point you bring up, doctor, because somebody could uh, could have itching, let's say, or yeah. a little bit of swelling in their ankles, and they go to their regular doctor. And the MD may not recognize it right away for what it is. <laughs> Am I correct in that? That does happen, and um, as a matter of fact, the one, the one, the first symptom that you mentioned, itchiness of the lower leg, that that is one of the definite um, symptoms of venous insufficiency. And some people can even develop a rashy kind of uh, change to the skin in the lower leg. Um, and we get many of our patients from dermatologists who are seeing these, who are seeing people. And uh, for the for a rash, um, and uh, again, that makes sense to the layperson that gee, I have a rash. I'm going to go see my dermatologist. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, but in fact, it's not due to a skin problem. It's due to a circulation problem, uh, and that's some, and it can look like it can look like a skin problem. We call that venous eczema. You know, because the rashiness that people can get on their lower leg looks like, you know, garden variety eczema. Sure, we've all uh, seen that. I mean, people wear right. shorts and and uh, and slippers around here. You can see their their legs are almost two different colors. They get yeah. down around the ankle, and it's a deep reddish brown almost. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, many people with uh, a vein problem develop that uh, pigmentation. You know, we call that hyperpigmentation uh, of the skin. Of the lower leg, and and yeah, that's kind of a that's a, that's sort of a foreshadowing. Now, um, you know, with respect to your question, 
what are some of the early signs? Um, well, and you mentioned a couple, chronic swelling. Um, now, swelling can be due to a number of different things. Um, you know, so it depends on the overall health profile of the patient. You know, does that patient have uh, uh, heart problems or lung problems? And, you know, we have to kind of piece it all together. But uh, if you look at everybody in the country, um, swelling of the lower lower part of the legs, uh, you know, the probably the most common reason across the board is a circulation problem, namely venous insufficiency. Um, you know, the other category of, of people that we see a lot uh, that, that, again, have a symptom that they don't necessarily connect with uh, a vascular problem is muscle cramping, you know, charley horses. Oh, okay. It's it's not always just caused by dehydration or something like that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we see this particular symptom, especially in many of our older patients, and they have cramping that, you know, typically wakes them up at night or, um, you know, it's when they're first going to bed and, you know, it really, it, it really can interrupt their sleep patterns. And, um, you know, the, especially, again, the older folks, they, they get a muscle cramp, and it can be not only very, very painful, um, but it can go on for a while, and it can take a little bit of effort to, uh, you know, get rid of that cramp, you know, getting up and walking around and stretching and all that sort of thing, um, which can, uh, uh, again, interfere with their sleep pattern, which really impacts their quality of life um, because, you know, they're, they're not getting a good night's sleep. Sure. Um, and uh, so we, we have a lot of people that, you know, don't, don't know that that's a symptom in the, until they come in to see us and uh, we can fix their uh, venous insufficiency and uh, it, you know, almost literally changes their life and they're, they're very, very happy. I can imagine that. Now, on the other side of that, just because somebody has some itching at their ankle or uh, sees a little rash, that does not necessarily mean venous insufficiency. But it's, so, it's a time to go in and make sure of that, get the proper diagnosis from, a, from the Veins Clinic of Hawaii. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I tell people. Uh, and that's what I tell other physicians, too. Um, you know, if you're not sure if you have a patient or if you are the patient and you're having uh, symptoms uh, with your legs, uh, you know, just come in and, and uh, see us. If it's not vein-related, we will undoubtedly be able to help you figure out what it is and we'll, we'll you know, point you in the right direction. G- terrific. Now, uh, we did bring up the topic of varicose veins. A lot of, yes. especially men, think that this is probably just a, a woman problem. That's not necessarily true, is it? Yeah, absolutely not. Um, if you, uh, again, if you look at, at a large you know, population of people, you know, for instance, uh, you know, everybody in the United States, um, the, you know, venous insufficiency and vein problems are a little more common in women. Um, and that's primarily because of pregnancy. Uh, pregnancies can be very hard on veins and, and vein function. Um, and, uh, you know, the hormonal changes that, that go along with that and then also hormonal changes that occur you know, later in life, but, uh, you know, so it's a little more common, but I got to tell you, we see a lot of men uh, come in with, you know, all of these symptoms, and, uh, and we, and, and, you know, obviously we treat them too. Um, in our practice, uh, it's got to be very, very close to 50-50, you know, oh, 50% men, 50% women. That's surprising. Uh, I, that, that surprises me. Yeah. Um, that is one of those things, and, and, and men uh, tend to write it off a little more, you know, when they see when <laughs> everything they, when it comes to health. You know, also not a surprise, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, and, and then a lot of people feel like, gee, I have some varicose veins, and varicose veins are just a cosmetic problem, and uh, that also is, uh, you know, is unfounded. It's not, uh, you know, it's not reality. Um, just about everybody with varicose veins has this process called venous insufficiency, um, and uh, and it's a medical issue. You know, it's a, it's a medical problem that has its own risks 
and complications and uh, uh, you know so we we fix it and make people feel better well that and and that's why we go to the doctor isn't it okay yeah. now you say that uh, it's pretty close equal for men and women uh, right. a question would be what determines who gets varicose veins i mean is it is there something we can do in uh, in our life when we're younger, I'm talking about exercise and this way, eating better, taking care of ourselves, uh, or at any time in our life. Is there something we can do, or is it just luck of the draw, or <laughs> yeah. bad luck of the draw, uh, to get these things? Yeah. Um, yeah, venous insufficiency is um, very much, uh, you know, determined by genetics. Hmm. So, you know, it's something that we inherit from parents and grandparents. Um, so, you know, people, so people are sort of born with a genetic predisposition to develop it. Um, now, can they alter it? Yeah, they probably can alter the course a little bit. Um, and certainly alter the symptoms, but you know, if if you are a younger person and you have uh, family members that have that, that have vein problems or have been treated for vein issues, varicose veins, etc., um, probably being a little more uh, open to wearing compression stockings. You know, we we talk about compression stockings all the time too. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, uh, these are special stockings that uh, uh, you know you can get online. We sell them uh, in our offices, but uh, they're they're constructed such that they compress the leg, and they compress the leg in a way that uh, it facilitates blood flow upward. So they're actually called graduated compression. The most of the compression is down around the foot and the ankle and then it lessens as it comes up and again the theory is that you're uh, you know facilitating blood upward which is the direction that it should be moving. So um, I think being aware of that and then again for a younger person knowing that they have potentially a risk of developing venous problems in, in the, at some point in the future, and then in being aware of the symptoms, um, and then acting on that when they start to have the symptoms. It's, it's a little easy, more easily treated the earlier that we see it. Yeah. And, and, we, and we treat young people all the time, too. I mean, uh, I think the youngest, the youngest person that we ever treated was a 15-year-old boy who really? had you know, terrible varicose veins. Um, so it can start early. Wow, I, I had no idea. I thought it was like an old folks disease. Yeah. Um, now let me, we're just going to veer right here because I, I know you got to get going. You're a busy guy. But I want to ask this question because a lot of us are starting to travel again. Uh, we're getting on airplanes again. We're going places again, especially when you live out here in the ocean. You've got to get on a plane to go anywhere, really, even up to another island. But um, I have started, and you tell me if it's a good idea and we should all be doing it or not, wearing those compression socks. I wear them on the airplane. Um, when I fly now, because my ankles, uh, not all the time, but sometimes swell when I'm on an airplane. Is that a, do I have a problem or is that, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking you to diagnose my problem, but is that something, should people be wearing these compression socks on the airplanes? Yeah. Well, first of all, Joe, yes, you need to come and see us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if, if you have swelling in that situation, then it may very well, you know, indicate that there's, you know, oh, a, a problem with vein function. Okay. Um, but to answer your question, um, you, uh, across the board, I think everybody should wear compression stockings on airplanes because of the fact that uh, that that's one of the prime uh, uh, prime kind of situations where people can develop blood clots in their legs uh you know that immobility especially uh, you know for us in Hawaii uh, no matter where we fly if we're if it's outside of Hawaii it's going to be a 5 or 6 hour flight sure. um and uh in what's happening there is that you know during that 5 or 6 hours you you're sitting most of the time and, you know, you're not contracting your muscles, and the blood sort of, you know, stops moving. It kind of stagnates in, in areas, especially in your legs. And, um, and that's a, you know, that's a setup, a perfect setup for a blood clot to form. Now, some people are more prone to blood clots than others. 
Um, but like I said, across the board, I recommend that everybody wear compression stockings. You are protecting yourself from developing a blood clot. The other two things is to get up and walk around. You know, the uh, unfortunately, uh, these uh, the airline personnel, they kind of try to keep you in your seat these days. You yeah, know, they don't yeah. let you walk around much. But you have to, you know, uh, I think for best for best uh, protection, you know, at least every hour, get up and walk around a little bit. The other thing is to, you can do, uh, you know, our, uh, uh, leg and foot kind of exercises while you're sitting in your chair. And often, if you read through the airline magazines these days, uh, you know, kind of on one of those back pages, there's a little article about, uh, you know, the, ex- the leg exercises that you can do in your chair. And that's very effective, too, because what you want is that muscular activity. You, you want compression and then muscular activity, and that will keep uh, the blood moving moving through veins. And then the other thing is to, you know, maintain good hydration, you know, during your flight, uh, and probably your fluid intake would be, you should probably stay away from gin and vodka. Don't use that for hydration. <laughs> um, but uh, other things are good. Now you tell me. All right. <laughs> right. Okay. We're talking with Dr. Randall Julep. He leads the vein clinics of Hawaii. And folks, if you are experiencing any of the problems that we talked about today, or if you're just not sure or want to rule something out, go see Dr. Julep and his staff over at, well, they've got offices in Honolulu, Lahui, Wailuku, and over at your new ones in Kamala. Kamuela, correct, on the Big Island? Well, actually, no, the one in Kamuela has, has, is our oldest office. Oh, okay. Uh, and that has been there for a long time. But, however, we have a brand new office that we just opened several uh, months ago on the Big Island. It's in Hilo, so that's the oh, new one. Okay, well, let me put that here on my notes so I know what I'm talking about next time. Okay, yeah. so anyway, Dr. Julef, valuable information. Always wonderful to have you on the show. And we uh, invite folks to go see you. You're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30. I'll go ahead and give the phone number. It's 808-214-5715. It's the Vane Clinics of Hawaii, and they're on North Market Street in Wailuku. Easy to find. Make an appointment and uh, let Dr. Julef uh, assist you in getting your health back in your legs and uh, and put an end to this venous insufficiency. Do we put an end to venous insufficiency, or do we just uh, kind of work with it? I mean, do you always have it, or is it? Good? <laughs> well, yeah. Unfortunately, since it is a genetic problem, uh, we don't we can't change that yet. Yeah. We can't be, change people's genetics. Uh, but, sounds uh, like you. We do for our darndest to control it, and, <laughs> I, and I think we do a pretty good job at that. And, uh, and I would add also, Joe, um, that people can go to our website, okay. veinclinicsofhawaii.com, and uh, there's a bunch of information. We have kind of a you know online questionnaire to kind of help people decide whether they have a problem or not. And also, uh, uh, people can communicate with us through the website. So um, if you're more prone to, to do that, then you know we're more than happy to hear from you through our website. Wonderful. Dr. Julep, thank you again for joining us. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for the job that you do. Okay. Thank you, Joe. You take care now. You too. Mm-hmm. There you go. Dr. Randall Julep, that phone number again at Vane Clinics of Hawaii, 214-5715, online at vaneclinicsofhawaii.com.